we all come to the practice with our worries, our desires, our doubts. And don't think that you have cleared up before you practice. It's in the course of doing the practice that you first create a little space. So you can work on the skills of the mind, get the mind to have stronger concentration, stronger discernment. And then you can really turn on them and deal with them a lot more effectively. It's like going into wilderness. You want a safe place in the wilderness. But you can't go through the wilderness and kill all the dangerous animals and then make a house for yourself. You first clear a little space and do what you can to keep the animals at bay and build yourself a cabin. Then you have your safe place to retreat to. And from there you can go out and make your forays. So when you sit down to train the mind, it's not a matter of getting rid of all of your doubts and desires and worries. You clear a space in the mind where you can do your work. Now for some people it's pretty easy. They're tired of these kinds of thoughts and they just want to have some respite. They find that when they give the mind a comfortable place to stay, it's willing just to stay there and to enjoy the sense of well-being that comes and when the breath is comfortable, when it feels easeful, refreshing, energizing when you're feeling tired, calming when you're feeling tense. And you get interested in what the breath can do in the body. Once you get a sen sense of comfort, say, in one spot, then you can allow that sense of comfort to flow to other spots in the body. And for some people that's enough to at least put the worries and doubts and desires aside for the time being. The mind has something interesting to play with, something rewarding to play with here in the present moment. In other words, it's tired of its old ways of thinking and wants to have some respite. For other people, though, there's a lot of energy that goes into the worries and doubts and, and desires. So you have to do a little battle with them first. Again, this isn't enough to put an end to them, but at least you give yourself some space. And sometimes you learn to use worry and doubt and desire to, to fight these things off. In other words, you think about the fact that if the mind is not well trained, then when aging, illness, and death come, what are you going to do? I mean, you can try to defend yourself by making sure there's good medical care and that you've got your insurance paid. There's only so much that doctors can do. You have to look after your mind at that point. How are you going to handle the fact that the body's not working anymore? Can't do what it used to do. And things start closing in. How does the mind not get trapped in suffering at that point? Well, it's through developing the qualities of meditation. So this way you use your worry to put your worries aside, at least your other worries, because these are the big deals. Aging, illness, and death, these are the big issues in life. And all too often other things become, or at least seem to be, more pressing. But just because something is pressing doesn't mean it's important. And so you're sitting here and you've got an opportunity to develop the qualities that will help. The ability to get the mind concentrated, to tell it to stay with one thing and it stays with one thing. Because at times, especially when there's aging, illness, and death come, the mind is going to be running to run all over the place, looking for some way out, and often grasping at the wrong things. If you can tell it to stay with some one place and it obeys you, it's going to be a lot less suffering at that time. As for desire, again, we have lots of desires in life, but you ask yourself, what, would, what is your ultimate desire? What desire should take priority? Well, the desire for true happiness. The happiness doesn't harm you, doesn't harm anybody else. The happiness, it doesn't change. Now, you may have your doubts about the existence of that, but 
when you've got the opportunity to look for it, the only way you're going to find it is if you actually give yourself over to the path. See if it really works. Make that your desire. And let your other desires fall by the way. All too often, though, we want to have our cake and eat it too. I think I've told you about the, the story of the young woman who was learning from her stepmother that if you really want happiness in life, you have to decide there's one thing you want more than anything else and you're willing to give up everything else for that one thing. And how most people don't like hearing the story. The girl certainly didn't like hearing the story, that getting this lesson from her stepmother. They were playing chess at the time, and she noticed that her stepmother was losing this piece, losing that piece, and she thought her stepmother's a pretty bad player. So she got more aggressive. Of course, what happened was that the stepmother was setting a trap. She was losing the pieces strategically, and she was able to win the game. So there are some desires you've got to put aside in order to get the desires you really want. The idea that we can have everything we want. denies that fact. But there are so many things that you gain one thing and you have to give up something else in order to get what, you really, what the first thing would be. So you have to decide what, what are your priorities and focus your desires on getting your top priorities. As for doubts, you have to learn how to doubt your doubts. Doubt helps you in some ways. A certain skepticism keeps you from falling for things that would otherwise harm you. But it also prevents you from committing yourself to something that's really useful and something that may take a lot of time and a lot of effort. So if you give in to your doubts all the time, you learn the skills that take a little bit of time and a little bit of effort, but they don't take you very far. This is some of the first tactics we may have to use. Get the mind to not take its doubts and its desires and its worries so seriously. In other words, use more skillful versions of those thoughts in order to fend off the unskillful ones. So at the very least, you've cleared a space. You can start building your home here. So that even though there are there's still animals out there in the forest. You've got your safe place to stay, and then you can work in that safe place to develop the qualities you need. In order to put an end to all the wild beasts in your mind. So we all come with worries and doubts. I mean, doubt doesn't get put aside totally until stream entry. And the Buddha doesn't ask you to deny your doubts. Just says, learn how to recognize which ones are your friends and which ones are not your friends. The same with your worries and the same with your desires. We're going to have these things quite a long ways along the path. So learn how to use them skillfully so you can clear yet a space for yourself where you can develop the qualities needed to get beyond these things ultimately. It's just a matter of learning how to live with them, give them their space, but you have your space something as something separate. There was a time back in Thailand when I had to stay in a, an old building that was filled with these little little bugs. They looked like little potato bugs, and there were many, many thousands of them. But for various reasons, I had to stay in the building. So I swept off a little space, put up my umbrella tent, and sat and meditated. And basically dedicated some, the merit of my meditation to the bugs, and I said, as long as I can have this little space, I'm fine. You can have the whole rest of the building, but I'll ask for this space. And sure enough, they didn't come into the tent. And that gave me the space to meditate, gave me the space to practice. So in your mind, you've got to realize there are going to be all kinds of bugs all over the place, all kinds of wild animals. But at the very least, if you've got a space that you can clear away for the time being at least, you can work on the qualities you need in order to 
get rid of those wild beasts once and for all. <laughs>